to the show with everything you could ever want to make and do. Right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Fern. I'm Stephen. And here's what's coming up on today's show. In Food Fingertips, find out how to pile all your favourite toppings onto the hedgehog splat pizza. Find out what Fern can make using just old CDs and a piece of paper in under a minute. And save your takeaway cartons and plastic forks for a fun game of meatball. And for all the details on today's makes, you can look on our website, address at the end of the show, or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Time was when dinosaurs roamed the earth, destroying and ravaging everything in their path. Others learned to fear the awesome creatures and steer clear of their stomping grounds. Well, here on Fingertips, we're rather fond of these mighty beasts. Remember, the CD-saurus, a helpful character always willing to stall your favourite CDs. Well, now we've dusted down the fossils and unearthed yet another helpful dinosaur. The Fingertips Tidysaurus. Just like the CD-saurus before him, the Fingertips Tidysaurus is always there to give a helping hand to hold your odds and ends on his horns, like your bike keys, hair bands, and even your sunglasses. But underneath this dino face hides a secret. Lots of hidden storage space, so you can hide your private possessions that you'd rather others didn't find. Now, you may think the tidy source looks complicated to make, but as always, we've been recycling stuff you'd probably find from around your house and masking taped it all together. Now, to start off with, you want to find a container like this, like a sunflower spread container, and stick it face down onto the back of a paper plate. And then bend the paper plate back on itself, and there you now have one instant dinosaur frill. Now, for the spikes of the dinosaur, just cut out out of stiff white card a triangular shape like this and use this as a template to make another nine. And then stick them around the edge of the dinosaur frill like that. Now, once you've stuck all your spikes in place, you want to get a chip shop cone or you could just use a paper cone. And you need to stick this to the bottom of your margarine tub. Just use some masking tape again. Don't worry, because you are going to be painting over this in a little while. So you can put lots on. There we go. And then get a paper bowl and cut it in half and stick this to the base of your chip cone. So just stick it all the way around. And this will give you a nice, rounded dino face. Now, use the other half of the bowl to make the dinosaur's beak. And this is nice and easy. What you do is you just Fold the bowl round and keep it in place with some masking tape, just like that. And then flatten this out. And with a pair of scissors, cut half the way down. But don't go all the way through, just to the very edge, like that. Now open this out and then if you bend it, you get the beak shape and you want to put some masking tape over this bit here. So let's just secure that, like that. And now you can stick it in place. There's your dino. And there's your perfect beak. And these two little horns are just made from bits of card rolled into thin points with flaps at the bottom so you can mask and take them onto the margarine tub. And if you get a section of an egg box, this little pointy bit here, this will make a perfect horn if you stick it onto your beak. Just, just stick it all down there. And poly balls make perfect dies. One this side and one that side, and now it's time to get painting. We've gone for a lovely dinosaur green. And when you've painted it, you can start adding other details, like maybe a yellow beak. Also, we've drawn on some scales with a felt tip pen. We've got some white horns. You can add whatever you like, because let's face it, no one knows what the dinosaurs really look like anyway. Now, a pizza box is the perfect place to mount your tidy saurus and a great place for all of your secret storage. You can use any packaging you like. Toothpaste boxes, match boxes, even chewing gum packaging. Just stick it all firmly in place and paint. And when it's dry, just get a black marker pen and draw on a wood grain effect. It looks very realistic, doesn't it? And check out the little name plaque we've added. This is just some shiny wrapping paper. And inside, we've decorated our packaging to look like the tidy Saurus's mouth. And if you go to the Fingertips website, you can download and print off a template of this. The address is coming up soon.
Then all you have to do is stick your Tidysaurus onto the top of the pizza box. And then you can pop him up wherever you like. And have a look at these fellas, all made in the same way but just painted differently. You could maybe change the colour of your backboard, change the colour of your Tidysaurus. And make one to your favourite colour. Mine's pink. So make mess a thing of the past and disorder extinct with a fingertips Tidysaurus. <laughs> This is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And today it's... Spalat Pizza, your very own cartoon caper in the kitchen. It's a pizza with all your favourite toppings in the shape of a cute little hedgehog. Now it's really easy to make and will give you a giggle. So to make that splat shape, get a pizza base and just cut off all the size in a curved shape, and there you have your splat. But don't get rid of these bits because you're going to need them to make the legs a bit later on. And, Stevie, there we have one splat. Sorted. Now keep your splat on the baking tray and then you get to add your toppings and you can add whatever you fancy. Now I'm going to have my favourite pizza, which is the tomato base. Now try not to go over the edges. Add a bit more on there. There we go. And then, let's add a couple of mushrooms, just on there, sprinkle them all the way around, a couple more I think, there we go, and now for the cheese, just sprinkle that on too, all over the top. And I finished cutting out those little legs from the leftover bits from earlier, so we'll put those on the tray to get cooked as well. Now for the hedgehog's eyes, uh, for the eyeballs, we use two slices of boiled leg, Pop them in place like that. And for his pupils, we just slice an olive, just there, and pop those in place. And then you want one big olive for his nose. Then you want to pop him in the oven on gas mark seven, that's 240 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Now, once you've cooked your pizza, put him onto a nice plate and then just arrange his little legs around him. Food fingertips. Pizza with a... Splat! Got a minute? Yes, this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something that can be made in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Today it's my turn to make. And deep joy, it is my turn to time. And that's all it takes. Now it's not a lot of stuff, is it? Now I've got to say, in Fern's defence, and she's feeling very nervous about this one, in rehearsals, and quite stressed, <laughs> in rehearsals she only managed to make this once. Uh, do you think you're going to do it today? Um, I'm lacking in confidence, I have to admit, but it can be done. My fingers are crossed. Now we're not going to tell you what it is, you're going to have to try and guess as Fern makes it. All I'm going to say is good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. I'm not going to keep you dangling with this one. Oh. So clue, see, I even managed to fit a clue in there, even though I am stressed and under pressure. In three, two, <clears throat> one, go! Take your CDs, get rid of that for now, and you want to tape two CDs together. All already, Stick. don't want to worry you, but ten seconds are already up. Stick two CDs together. Here, then if I turn <laughs> that over, just check where I've stuck You're talking them. very quietly. I know, because I'm trying to concentrate, even though you are gibbering in my ear. Twenty seconds have gone. Twenty seconds have gone. Don't, mind, don't, don't tap my back, please. You don't like that. It's so annoying. Right, then get a pencil. 30 and seconds have gone. Roll up some paper. Oh, I tell you what, you could be on time to do this, Miss Cotton. All the way. Coming up to 40 seconds, everyone. 40 seconds. What should you do it? Then, actually. Oh, nearly forgot something. Okay, nearly coming up to 45 up. seconds. Then. Okay, I would start to speed up now. Okay, 50 seconds. 50 seconds. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Stop! Two. Yeah! I did it! <laughs> yes! I did it, look. 58 seconds. Oh. I've got to say, I did tell them. I did tell them that you'd do it. How long? How many seconds? Uh, 58 seconds. You did right. very, very well. Let me show you how it works. Go on. If I sp it's a bit wonky, but it's there. It's there. It's all there. OK, right, if I just even this out and roll it across the table, you'll see... It's crazy spinning action. Look at that. It works quite well, doesn't it? Look, see? It does. All reflecting colours. And look, if I pick it up and spin it, look at that and all the colours reflect. You see, now that, that's the bit that I like. It's so good. Now, let me just hang this up here because you could experiment with even more CDs like this one here. And this one is brilliant. Look, if I give it a good spin, you can see the spiral design just looks so cool. 
Now, if you go to the Fingertips website address at the end of the show, we've actually got that design on our website that you can download and print off. So why don't you try taking a Fingertips Disco Dangler for a spin? It's disco-tastic and it'll only take a minute to spin it. Football. Basketball. Meatball. Baseball! All great sports that require skill. Hang on. Meatball? Yep, because this is fun fingertips and this is a game of meatball. The most fun you can have with old takeaway foil containers. Ooh. The aim of the game is to flick your meatballs into your scoring takeaway containers. The one with the highest score wins. Yes! Nice shot. Now, you'll be able to make meatball in minutes. And once you've mastered the fork flick trick, there'll be no stopping you. Now, to make it, you need to get your fingertips on as many takeaway cartons and plastic forks as you can. And if you don't have any at home, you can actually buy them in packs at the supermarket. Now, making the pasta targets is even easier than boiling spaghetti. You just want to glue your foil carton straight onto its lid and this will give it lots more stability with all those meatballs flying around everywhere. Then pop in a few bits of pasta. There we go. And these large pieces of pasta are superb. And now you want the pasta shells to stick to the tray and for that you need some tomato sauce. Well actually you need some ready brown paint mixed with PVA glue. And when you've fully mixed it, it's time to pour it over your pasta shells. Let's pour it Ooh, all the way around. Lovely. How good does that look? And you can add some seasoning too to make it look really tasty. Okay, and now for the scores. What you do is get yourself one of your plastic forks and with a permanent marker, just give the fork a score. And then you want to push this into your tray and make sure it's touching some of the tomato sauce. That way it will stick in there. Now you can make as many of these as you like, but we found the game works well with six. Then leave it to dry overnight and you'll have meatball for breakfast. And you can see on this dry version, the pasta and fork are stuck in really well. Now let's make the metallic looking meatball launcher fork. Now it looks like a complicated shape, but actually it's really straightforward, especially when you know the fingertips nifty trick. Now to make it, you need to get a CD sleeve, the sort you get with three internet CDs, and just pinch it closed like this, like a pyramid shape, and keep pinching it down, and then flatten out the sides like this, and then cut like a semicircle out of the top, and now all you need is a craft stick, a bit of glue on the front of that, and stick the CD sleeve onto this. And there is the basis of the fork. And now let's give it a try. Take a ping pong ball and pop it into your launcher. Give it a squeeze. Oh! oh. And watch the meatballs fly. Boy, <laughs> you hit them. <laughs> now, here's a good idea. Why don't you paint your launcher a metallic looking colour, also draw on a fork shape to make it look more realistic. And then, for your ping pong balls, all you do for them is just cover them in like a ready brown paint and that would make your meatball. And now, it's time to play... Fingertips Meatball. The rules are simple. Each player has six meatballs and the high score wins. The targets worth the most points are furthest away. And once you've made this game, you won't be able to stop playing. It's harder than it looks. Oh, I tell you what, playing fun fingertips meatballs making me peckish. I'm off for a bite to eat. OK. Pasta la vista, Fern. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then check out the Fingertips website. The address is right there. And we'll see you very soon for some more... Fingertips! fingertips. Bye! Bye.